This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, available only on YouTube. So I'm going to start with the uh, first poem from Citizen, which is called Cool Dust. A heave of afternoon light pulls a tulip from the turf, a bower for locusts, a cup of shells. The farmhouse tilts a bent shadow on wheels. In cedar rooms, a family is molded, silent, wrapped in the wire of steel eyes and stopped voice, romantic ash. This is not my house, my ghost, my uninvited guest, my lost labor of love, my thicket or grease my JPEG gessoed or rawhide suit. The yellow light throbs like an internal organ, soft body of an overture to insect sounds, sapling of a new world, whose future awaits me at the tilting window of my own domestic hut. Perhaps this is my mesh of hours, my muscular ache, my guardian sash, twist of rope carved around an old maple trunk, my rod of power red with anticipatory friction at the edge of an emerging set of planetary rings. Stained ochre by the air, I pitch forward a vanilla-scented pear that floats or falls. In the rattan chair on the front porch by the blistered boards of the front door, a figure of tar watches. Cool dust sparkles and settles. Shadows have made me visible. An empty wagon flares on the hillside. Spring breeze. I'm as stupid as a spitball in a jumpsuit. Look at my catalog of terrors. The Marquis says, incline toward medieval defenses. Who gave chase while the morning thrummed to a pillage of pigeons on the balcony, whoopee a nosedive, but kept the midnight searchlights on. Citywide librarians mark you overdue brought to abandon by the fall of your syllables after the rise, narcoleptic euphony. But is it you or I at stake in this topical heat? And whose shady purposes exhumed us, plated, wet, and uninhibited like dinner eels? The sentence with its unshakable sentence, captive logic, as the two-tone synergy churns, the beautiful sentence, marsupial, conjugal folds. A man crosses his arms in a liquid maneuver, intractable but pliant, his feet already planted in second position. The marquee says, at home in the spiral prospectus. Or your face in the searchlight projected sincere and unembellished, a charismatic stupor that equals the sky. John said, sprawled before us full of meaning, but which alphabet in? Is that you on the bed, arms up, legs up, eyes up, to make a bouquet of parts? 
sheared by the fluttering bamboo blinds? Are those my boots on the flat weave rug, solemn as tombstones, yet glistening like loam? Where the jade plant in its fat gold pot is magnet to the afternoon air that ladles on the... Is that your nose ring flashing signals recumbent decoder? My tipped vault opens onto African kente cloth splashed on the mattress that is by chance his extract and froth. A memory dispatch signs in just as the word galloping is mouthed. With E in Brazil tucked in a feral crouch and J in Deefe thick with morning hair and is it you, spindle, unreeling filament, 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 in the heat of disclosure, tactile attaching invention anew as face to face, totally occupying space, inhabiting space. With a tip of the hat to Whitman, and there are many tips of the hat in this book, filament, 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 from Whitman's great poem, A Noiseless Patient Spider. This is called Sagacity. Look at the past, that conduit of vapor. She squints at the window as if rummaging through time, mumbling something about my body. Patina flows, redistributed flank. Each morning as she works at her desk, the cramped hand in its or the influx of his muscular smile as he used to, a still point on a revolving globe, a spoon of ours. The little silver cat wriggled free of her lap, licked its stretched paw, if she could lick her paw, and forgot the previously to die for strokes. She got up and stretched as best she could prickly fingers. An influx of where she was, the immediate coordinates of the sunlit room, ivory walls, sloping floor, baskets and painted pots, the open ledger, the notebook splayed like a specimen. A clatter to attention, as if cramming down meatballs or toasted nuts or big fists of runny cheese. If she could seize them and fix them, if she could lock the melodious facts in place. She stood still in the gale of objects and signs like a mast, sucked at the wind, crossed her arms, stared down a yellow bowl, dared it to fade. This is called The Stillness. <clears throat> Once I was a sailor in a town with no name, hey nani nani or go cat go. I had a red mountain bike and two skateboards, wheel confetti but my skiff was my uber pal. I could split the seam of any vector, river, lake, or draw, with coots sputtering from mangrove jumbles surprised by my sudden proximity, and the imprint of my oar in the liquid sky barely visible. Some called me Micah Glint, and some called me Mary Louise, and both were fine with me, depending on which shoes I wore, sleek rubber or nubby hemp, woven in strips or knit from fallen leaves. I could cut through downtown squatting the slats as low and clean as a needle, gravel showers parting, clattering gray canyon air, once I was a sailor with my long hair flowing, with a satchel of pink apples and a bouquet of peas, tendrils trailing. 
in a stub of an afternoon removed from sequence, heretic hovercraft, in a flat eddy where you watched from the shore or corner or car or chair, to whom I waved relentlessly as I glided past, unrolling my way in circles or arcs such as cursive letters make. In that gap, in that rounded space, in my silent groove, like a paper boy in a paper boat, turning as I was turning. Oh, I think I'll jump script and read um, this, uh, probably the strangest poem in this book and one of the most um, fun to read, which is called Cowboy Don't. Cowboy, don't eat me. Yes, I'm tasty. Yes, I've come from my warren stuffed like a Christmas goose, tongue lolling. But cowboy, think of my varnished nose, my bucket of pink gums, the opera of my eyes. Let the knotted grid loosen. Let your hard silhouette overflow. Alluvial redemption. Let me slink away soundlessly into the lavender hills. Sanctuary caravan. Cowboy, don't eat me. Go for the calf over there, tender as cactus jelly. I'm too sweet and too fat. My innards are frescoes of hormone spikes and acid splats. Mucho digestive scrabble. Don't open me to the scouring winds, please. Close your paring knife, your dripping cowboy lips. Life is episodic, and a revolution idles there behind the pink escarpment where my pack is gathering now. The world, este mundo immenso, gyrates and kicks, and the hot stars in their pale ignition, are burning, burning. Where did my cowboy poem come from? Um, I spent some of this book, a bunch of this book is written in Mexico. You will find if you read it and some that, that I'll read. And some were written in Arizona, where I actually just came from, uh, a place in southern Arizona, right next to the town of Tombstone the veritable site of the O.K. Corral and Boot Hill and Wyatt Earp. So I think I know there was a little bleed through in there. Gloria Mundi. Once I was an old man with wind in his hair, pulverized by the air. That wasn't fair. So I crawled back over the bridge to where the beautiful nights dance like bears. And sidling up to the professor of youth, who was seething to see me unspooled, tamped furrows, sat down in my former spot with a heft of purpose. And with my eyes now sparkling like fresh cream, started to sing, Attention purifies the vagrant mind as if it had been peeled out of a hymnal from my childhood. Once I was a young Turk with wind at his back. It was hard to argue with that. Once I had a tunic of cobalt blue, a twilight cape, a dark kimono, with a sweep of authority as if it were my hair, I climbed the laddered air to where the voices hung like ornaments in cobalt space, dancing bears, and waited in the sonic arches as if I were at home there, and learned my methods and honed my craft, bridge and arch, ladder and stair, happily at home there. <clears throat> uh, 
And this is the poem called Citizen. Um, it uses the word cirrus, C-I-R-R-U-S, as in clouds. It's hard to hear, but easy to see. Citizen. Across the wide rim of the bay, cirrus, hissed equanimity, the glass cutter's cascade where he will pause to locate himself on a map of monarchs and queens in the city's periodic swirl that leaves him lolling on wobbly knees across the lumpy pavement and rain gullies just filled, artery from cafe to bookstore to hill park, where he will dangle yet again as from a descending parachute but fall no farther nor more quickly because so fascinated by the raucous air in a shaft of time. Across that flipped metropolis on its back ventral skin laid bare to him, where he will follow his newly stumbling gait as if running behind himself as he once was in the high cram of simultaneous days, twister, which he has been and longed for and stampeded into, duly imagined, communalized, extracted from, recollected, remade, revisited, abided by, grown into and old in and smart from and stayed fresh for, crossing and recrossing and watches still Cirrus, wide across the wide rim of the bay. This is called Canto Hondo, with a little tip of the hat to Lorca. And uh, there's a figure here mentioned that's called um, Chacmul. This is one of the poems that comes from Mexico. And Chacmul, as far as I understand it, is a, um, a Mayan figure who you encounter in sculpture and that may be his actual place as a sculptor. I don't think there's much other sense that he's a deity or anybody else, anything else that appears except as a sculptor, a kind of reclining sculptor who's less ferocious than many of the Mayan figures, less ornate, but um, solid and scary as all the Mayan figures are. Canto Hondo. This is not a swan song. I am living the quiver. Once I rotated like an awl boring into, or felt the awl punctured and prepared, twist of surrender. Where are you opened? How are you opened? The great sprawling, the great contraction, we felt the vibrations in our eyelids, folding fan of the iris, seeing and stampeding and guzzling the broth of things. And we have heard the busting rhymes at midnight, a feast of seeming. This may well be my conjurer's spree. Once I had an exit wound teeming with the will of the people, it was savory pie to Chakmul, who served me with lychee paste and mezcal dew, a drink named Bleeding Waters. I was not his swan song, though he tried to stanch the flow. How do you thread a sigh so it attaches to the sky and rises like a mind on fire? Perhaps this is my sculpted stone in high relief, a whack of light. They called me harrowing esplanade, but walked right through with soft little dogs on catgut leashes and plastic bags to catch their dropped endearments. They called me aleatory jackpot, and I broke their backs, their books, their backs, their banks, their stack of books. I am riveted to easy solutions and complex elisions, 
like a soft little dog in heat. Once I began every story with, once. You are my exit wound, pure and translucent, a suction, a quiver. This is my swan song. And I think I'll, I'll close reading from this book and then I'll read a, just a couple of more po new poems with this poem called The Practice. They mistook me for illumination, a revenant in walking shoes. So I gathered significance and spread text. Stood beneath the seven cardinal points with arms upraised, practical telepathy, in a white paper suit like a flag of surrender, thunder at my back. I was an open man of the open streets, a burnished sieve of common purpose, scrawled on walls, thrashed cans, and blasted caps for equivalence. I wasn't alone. The boulevards teemed with wiggly kids and mooing parents slow as boulders. In the Plaza Palabra on a green iron bench, a grand senora suffered the odes of schoolboys and thugs, smiled behind an opal fan while they searched for words to match their tumultuous nights, and all words fit. In July, volubility. I hoarded cherries, cataloged their juices. Were they rainier, blood nut, royal Anne, squirrel heart, rosebud, or bing? Then swallowed them one by one like detonations, initiations. In a fever of taxonomy, I followed a squadron of dragonflies right to the vanishing point. Incarnation is a provisional state, but stretches outward like noon. For practice, I wallowed and stretched. <clears throat> One, uh, you may have heard already that there are a number of poems in Citizen that start with the trope of once, including that one called The Stillness, Once I Was a Sailor. And this poem uh, actually r begins to riff off of that. Um, I am a magpie and I uh, uh, steal from myself as well. So this is called Once. Once I was a sailor in a fiction of the sea for a made-up self on a boat of text. I was happy as a comma when the waves broke, lifting me like a magic carpet into the changeable mist, then driving me down through the indigo gulf on a slant of ablutions, erasure. And what of the mist with its long gray hair and crystal kiss? a little template of the fallen sky, thickened for disappearing acts. What of its rolling folds, rich as a bisque, seething like a surname or a lexicon well? And what of the gulf with its plot-driven plunge, its quick silver slippages, darting eels, and leading clues of bluey holes descending. Once I was or could have been or may yet be a magnificent sailor, spelled out on a graph of azure rills with hologram eyes that tell of spillover holds or vanishing dives or shedding selves. I bob in the chop wail in the spray, plunder the swells. And what of the was with its cargo of facts? What of the once 
with its blown open hatch and flowering mast and operatic sail. Uh, I, it's always fun to put yourself on the line at a reading, and this is a poem from this week. Um, and I did indeed just get back from Arizona where I spent most of the last uh, 10 days. So here we go, be kind. He stood. He stamped his feet and opened the door, stood on the threshold, turned around. The desert light shrank his eyes, sun slammed his face. He almost lost his breath. Blonde, shiny grasses, ring of distant mountains pinking in the haze, the scorched but somehow fertile earth. He wiped his brow. He couldn't go in, he couldn't move, he couldn't say why. As if he too were a thing dried in beauty, stopped in his tracks in the heat that fixed him in its gaze, rattlesnake Medusa where he breathed the stinging, dusty winds as though a rock inhaling rock, his proper evolution, and fed on silence as it flowered and fell, the fierce clarity, the fierce restraint, front door behind him hanging open like a thrown shadow as he blazed in place inside the view the zooming arc, and edge to edge, the blue absolute. <laughs> Thank you. That is kind. <laughs> and uh, one more called Made a Song. Floating up and walked along, and made a song. Little Buddha in the clouds, squat upon the rise, what is the prize? And thus, O oh, great woman on the lowland chair, anything is fair. She thought, nah, where's the fair in that? And walked some more. Woman, Buddha, cloud, chair, floating, walking shadows in the higher air. As I look, screen, worry, dream, work, speak, under your sign of my projection, though high I bow to find the particle unseen and bring it home into the sky, my guide. So I skip and crawl, puppet of the mother air, moving puppets in the other air. This is where I dance, where I sit, what I saw and see as given to me. Or look, I can tear up space, tear up the clouds, the Buddha riding on an ozone wheel, free them all, feed them to the book, which always asks for more. Tear up the book, feed it to the song, feed all to all, and walk some more. Thank you. Thank you.